All right. All right. Thanks to Maggie. We are we are back. Uh, appreciate it, Maggie, as always, coming in clutch as the host. <laughs> I have I have made it official on Twitter. I'm leaving Comcast for Fios at some point in the near future. <laughs> uh, I'm sick of their crap. So anyway, let's continue. Scott, uh, this we we just finished up. Rye basically got up and said goodbye to the to Sook. Sook. Okay. So continue. <sighs> So says goodbye, jogs off into the the uh, garden, and is like, "Otto, grab it, wait up!" Mm-hmm. and runs off for. Should I do the rye voice? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, and as she uh, uh, she's running off to do that, uh, the camera then goes to uh, Gramen. Did it again. The camera then uh, goes to uh, Thonk. Oh, who uh, had just spent his uh, a, a night gathering rest. I mean, that ride down the river was not the most exciting experiences that he He's had. He's fine. He's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine, guys. <laughs> you know, I'm fine, guys. Um, he was, uh, I mean, it was just a long ride, twisting and turning and choppy at times. And everybody else seemed pretty fine, but no, Thong was not feeling very well. So he finally got his way all the way down to River Moot. And um, River Moat. Uh, when he finally got all the way down to River Moat, he decided to spend a day or two there just trying to like, you know, get rest up and relax and s- decide whether or not he wants to uh, get on another boat or raft or whatever to continue traveling along the river. Spending some time and trying to find out like where he was and like looking at a map or whatever of the local area, he realizes, you know what? He knows that they were going to be in Silvery Moon for some time. There's not a huge rush to get there. I am not going to just hop on another boat. I'm going to walk the road or ride the road, whatever it is, to, to go the rest of the way to close his gap to um, Silvery Moon. So <clears throat> he spent the night, a couple nights or whatever, kind of regaining his sea legs, or regaining his land legs from, um, uh, from the voyage, and uh, finally heads out on the road, heading to the east uh, towards Silvery Moon. He had just left the, uh, the town of um, river moat, w- r- remote, if I can say this word correctly, uh, river moat is not a large place. It, it isn't. It's, I mean, the, the, the place is tiny. Um, the, it's more or less like, because it's on the edge of the moors, because this is where two rivers meet each other is right by here. Um, it's kind of like a bayou area. Uh, the buildings here are almost uh, all of them are built up on stilts of about 10 feet high. Okay. Um, they do that because sometimes the water level just rises way the fuck up. So um, it's not a very large town. There's not very many people here. It's not very densely populated. But, you know, it was fine enough for Thong to find comfort. So when he finally leaves the place, he leads to head out on the road. And um, one of the things that he notices is as he's leaving River Moats and the whole everything they did in his experience here, kind of catches him off guard almost immediately that when he heads onto the road towards Silvery Moon, it's a much fucking better quality road than he would have expected leaving this podunk piece of shit. I mean, this literally looks like a place that could wash away at the next, you know, gust of wind. And, um, and this road is just absolutely amazing. And so um, he finds himself on this amazing road uh, traveling towards uh, Silvery Moon. Uh, does Thunk travel by day or night? Uh, well, I'm just traveling. Yeah, I'm traveling by day. By day? That makes yeah, sense. Yeah. So uh, Thunk would be traveling by day. And um, in doing so, he would be uh, traveling along. And one of the things that he would notice uh, right along that road is that, once again, holy shit, for a, a tiny little podunk place... There is an amazing bridge that that crosses uh, over across one of these uh, these rivers, uh, making its way over. I mean, the bridge has this like you can hear it as you're approaching this huge bridge of incredible craftsmanship, of incredible make, um, is at the top of the river, but not just anywhere, at the top of a waterfall of the river. So from part of the bridge, you could even stand directly where the water starts to fall or at some of the peninsula areas of the bridge that jut out somewhat from the land, you could actually stand out uh, away from the uh, where the water starts to fall and get a better sight of where it lands down below or uh, the entire free fall on the way down. 
But either way, it's just an amazing um, piece of architecture that he's able to walk by. Cool. I'll, and before I cross the bridge, I go 10 miles north, take the long way around, go 10 miles <laughs> south, and avoid the bridge completely. <laughs> I mean, I have to ask, is <laughs> is the reason why you're saying this because yeah, I'm just, I'm you happen to be on a battle map where uh, <laughs> the one-inch squares are, are made out of red lines? Yeah. yeah <laughs> okay, here. I'm going to quell some of your concerns here. Just give me one second. <clears throat> now they're purple lines. Perfect. That's much better. That's a lot safer. Yeah, well, yeah. that's gentler yeah. on the eyes. Yeah. There you go. Okay, so um, you're such a weird person, Mike. <laughs> So uh, you start crossing the bridge, and Thonk, honestly, he might find beauty in things like, in things like um, uh, architecture. And sure, the sound of rushing water is a cool sound, but it's not like Thonk really gives a shit about that stuff. He has a purpose. He's kind of in his own thoughts. He just kind of went through an experience. It's a little difficult to explain. And so I imagine Thonk does not stop to, um, to view the, uh, the waterfall, does he? No, no, he keeps moving. Yeah, he just keeps walking. And as he keeps walking, he hears something over the sound of the waterfall. Sounds like somebody's speaking, but doesn't think twice of it. Uh, but Thong is really perceptive. And so when it calls out the second time, uh, he hears somebody say, uh, it's beautiful, ain't it? I ignore them and keep walking. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, no, you don't think it's beautiful. And when he looks like over, because he doesn't really care, when he kind of like tosses a sideways glance, because he's you know, extremely perceptive, over to see who's talking to him, uh, there is a um, a woman. Oh, wrong, wrong one. Uh, there is a woman standing on the far side of the bridge uh, that was over by the peninsula and has taken a couple steps towards him. Um, that is calling out to him and, and speaking to him. He notices other people on the peninsula as well. All of them kind of like just taking in the beauty of the uh, of the bridge itself. But it's a dwarven woman. That's um that's standing there. Um, she's dressed kind of um in a lot of like furs and stuff like that. Maybe she's a trapper. I don't know. Uh, maybe she's a hunter. Who knows? Whatever. She's got this uh, decent sized spear in her hands, and she's like, "It is, ain't it? It's beautiful. The the sight, the sound, the rush, the power. It's beautiful, isn't it?" I kind of give her like a like a raised eyebrow nod kind of thing. Like I'm you don't. I'm going to keep walking. <laughs> you, you can't even stop to, to appreciate the beauty of it. I mean, it was crafted. Look at this. The entire bridge was crafted. God, like she's walking and I'm like, she's talking to my back at this point. Like, I'm just like, nah, I don't have time, nor do I care. Are you only about the destruction of things that people make, huh? I mean, this, this, this river wow. was, was built by the gods. And, 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 and you only care about the destructions of things. Uh, uh, people's lands, their dreams, um, swords, perhaps. <laughs> and, uh, I'm trying to think if that would actually, because it's been how long since so it's seen? Long fucking time. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Uh, 10 months? A lot of it to me, like, is just background noise. Like, she's just being a dick for no reason now. And I'm just kind of like, what, whatever, man. Like, you're, you're a crazy person. Keep so as you continue walking, she's like, and what about penance? What about seeking to, to, to make up for what you've done to Skull Crusher? Huh? Oh, right. What of that, Thunk? And she's calling out after you. You see, like, he's, like, barely about to step off the bridge before he's, like, he's lifting his foot to take another step, and he just stops, pulls it back, and just slowly turns around. Like, he knows what's about to happen. <laughs> and he slowly reaches for his mace. And he just mumbles to himself while looking at like his brand on his chest. You just don't want to fuck stop fucking challenging me, do you? So, so you do know Skull Crusher, or at least Thonk. Oh, this is pleasant. I don't say anything. Oh, um, well, you've done an injustice you you have and um uh I, it's kind of asks that um funny thing about questions justice. are answered funny hmm? thing about justice justice in the is in the eyes of the lawmaker and hmm. i mean and i was controlling that sword and that relic in that time what's unjust hmm. to you 
is just to me. Oh, well, I mean, I guess we could both have different opinions. I, personally, I just think uh, you should have died before. I mean, you are kind of a smelly orc. But, um, you know, I was just trying to, to you know, you've, you're, you, you should probably just die. And uh, as she's kind of like being all twitchy and weird, you see another dwarven female walking up towards you as well. This one is walking. It actually, you have a really high perception, so I will just let it go because you're like fucking 22 or some shit. Um, it takes you a moment to realize it's a female dwarf because the beard on her is just massive and very well groomed and very well maintained or whatever. But eventually you come to realize, no, that's a female, but it's a dwarf, it's a female. She comes walking towards you. Unlike this one that seems like chipper and chatty um, and it's like unkempt and kind of like socially awkward, um, this other one comes walking up and she just looks not amused with the situation. She just looks like stone. Good, then she has a similar look to me. So you are, Thunk. I didn't deny it. Help! It's Thunk. And uh, calling back over across the hills, sorry, across the uh, the stream, you do see from the other side, there are two others that are down there as well. And um, uh, here and that, they were kind of like leaning, half watching what was going on, but having a conversation with one another. Then you see uh, the other two start to make their way over uh, as well. Uh, one of them is uh, a, an elven uh, man. Mm -hmm. who stands there, strangely, uh, an elven man wearing um, uh, armor and holy garb and whatnot, but that of Morden. And um, walking alongside him towards you is a dwarven man um, who looks very familiar. Nope. No, he doesn't. You've never met him. A dwarven man that would look very <laughs> familiar to your friends, but to you... These darker skins, slightly different than any of the dwarves that you've really interacted with before, but he has on his shield a symbol that looks oh too familiar. You see on his shield the the, the symbol of Dumathoin. Good to know. That's the skull crusher, right? Are you thunk? How many times are you fuckers gonna ask that question? <laughs> <laughs> I do not walk around and just kill things. I need to know it's Thonk before I kill him. So what if I never answer your question? We're gonna sit here all fucking day? There are other there are other ways to find out the answers. So if you don't get the answer you want, what do you do? Cast a spell, torture the person. You're less impressive than I would have thought. I gesture to the four. What kind of stories you've been hearing that you need four of you to hunt me down? We are, we are all here for different reasons. You're my reason. Again, I gesture. So why do you need the four of you if I'm your reason? Didn't say. I'll move forward. Didn't say I needed the four. And then I'd look at him curiously. What do you want? To fight? To kill me? My death? On your hands? Vengeance. Four. And with that, he like hoist and hold up a hammer over his heads. It is a fucking beautiful looking hammer that you see that he's holding over his head. He holds it up and turns it a few different ways and whatnot so you can see it at all sides from where you are. And again, distance doesn't matter. Thonk is extremely perceptive. Um, you're able to see that the way he first holds it out, you see the head. Uh, one of the heads of the hammer, and what looks to be on there is a symbol of Morden's, which is, you know, the anvil and the, the you know, uh, um, uh, the working hammer, or whatever, shattered on the head of the hammer, turning it to the other side. You see the symbol of, um, of, Cor uh, of Corellian, which is uh, the elven, uh, the, the uh, greater elven deity. And once again, it's the symbol of, uh, of Corellian shattered. And then on the side of the hammer, I'm blazing on the side of the head, is uh, the eye of Grumsh. is right there on the side. And you can see he's holding this thing. Um, do me a favor. 
Roll me a perception check with uh, advantage because this you're not going to just get for free. Okay. 25. Okay. So um, what you're able to see as he holds up this hammer is that the hand that's holding the hammer um, is significant. Again, he's a darker, ruddier skinned um, uh, dwarf out of the one, other ones that you've met before. Um, his hand seems a bit more pale. His arm itself seems uh, a bit thinner than you would expect from the rest of his body. He's wearing armor, but what you can see of like his wrist that's exposed and everything, everything seems uh, just a bit weaker uh, in that arm that holds the hammer. I gesture to that. Seems like Skull Crusher's rejecting you. I... Sometimes we lose our way. We just need those to bring us back to the to the fold. Well, I believe that hammer is actually mine now, so mm. you'd be do well to throw it on the ground and give it to me. Oh, I'll be throwing it all right, and, and there will be things hitting grounds, but perhaps not the way that you're hoping here. So you're going to fight me. Fine. It was going to happen eventually but I'm not fighting the four of you. What is this? Some sort of gang up? It's your personal vendetta against mine. My deity against yours. Well, you've, in insulting one of our pantheon, you insulted the rest. And so they're all here as representatives of different dwarven pantheon gods. We all worship all of the gods and, <clears throat> and, Oh, sorry. We all worship all of the gods. We just have our, the ones that we focus on. As I said, you're here for me. I'm here for you. They are here for their, their own reasons. So then let it be you and me. A test of faiths. There is no test. You believe full-heartedly in, in your god and, and me and mine. And I do not like your God, but I do not hunt down and strike down all of those that worship him. Instead, it's, it's your actions. My God gave me sight and allowed me to find that missing hidden artifact that you so claim is yours now. I mm. took what was rightfully mine. Mm. And if you destroy this, this, the, the sword, I, I wouldn't care. It's your uh, faith versus mine, and, and things would be where they are. But you chose something else. Why let materials go to waste? Repurpose it. Recycling, I think they call it. Hmm. That sounds a bit <clears throat> altruistic for, for who you are. You hear what you want. Thunk, will you not make this easy? You know how this is going to end. Just lay down your life. Ask, ask, and, and it'll be swift. If I won't bend my knee to Obald, I sure as fuck ain't gonna bend my knee to a dwarf. I do not... Oh... You've met with Obold. I don't say anything. Hmm. Very well, Thonk. If it's if we must allow it to play out this way, then then we will do what we must. But understands that it comes with a heavy heart. I'd rather you die quickly and with little pain. But Vengeance must be had. And um, he looks to the elf um, that's at his side and just kind of like looks off over to the, uh, to the others that are standing there. And uh, the one that kind of like was stone face almost looks like, why isn't this fucking done yet? And just uh, leans kind of against the, uh, the stone wall that is the side of the bridge. The elf walks over, just stands by her, um, kind of like, Tossing like a, a look at her that you can't really make out because you know his back is to you. Clearly, like, they share a moment. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the other one, however, she's kind of like giddy and kind of like takes a few steps forward and is like like leaning in, like excited, like 
looking back and forth, like, how the fuck is this going to play out? And she's, like, really into this moment right now. Um, <clears throat> so so uh, he takes a step forward, kind of, like, getting uh, a, a smidge closer to you guys, lining up more or less where you guys are on the bridge, and looks down at the hammer. You can see a slight pained look on his face as he, as he looks down at the hammer uh, and then looks up to you. And for one more moment, there's that look of sadness, like it's a pity. And then <clears throat> almost like immediately that washes away. You can see he steals his jaw, his, uh, the way his feet are. They kind of shift slightly, changes his stance. He lowers his shield and readies it so it's on his arm. Uh, next time he looks up at you. There's no longer sorrow. There's no longer a pained look. There's no longer anything like that. He looks at you and, and you see the full ferocity of a dwarven paladin of Felbar standing across you on a battlefield with only one intention in mind. He's holding the hammer in one hand, has the shield strapped to the other arm, and, uh, and he's, he's looking you down. I will draw my mace and just kind of grip it tightly in my hand, and I'll just take a step forward, like, all right, like, let's do this. Okay, give me one second. Uh -huh. Okay. So, uh, one second. I oh, there you are. Just trying to make sure it's accurately represented. Let's remove that. Hit this. Bam. Okay. And that's there. Awesome. All right, cool. Uh, I got to change this one ever so slightly because that is it makes sense for. I'm so sorry. DM made a made a boo boo. It happens. DM makes boo boos. Hold, please. I'm holding. There we go. Lower that down by one. What are we supposed to hold on to? Hmm. Hold on to your butts. All right. So. Oh, wait. Missing another detail. And this is supposed to be two right here. Okay. Okay. Um, and then because you are an orc, we're going to change this. Okay. That should be cool. Awesome. All right. So he's holding his Warhammer in one hand, has a shield strapped in the other one. I just had to change uh, some slight details on the character sheet because of things from two, mm -hmm. whatever. And uh, and he stands opposite you, uh, looking you down. Uh, from over there, he does, uh, sorry, he uh, looks up at you and uh, says like a quick prayer to his god. And now both of you guys are welcome to roll your initiative rolls. My whopping plus zero initiative. Hey, I'll take it, 17. Not bad. I meant to do it like this. Oh, I gotta, yeah, I gotta roll, click on my guy so I can add him. Yeah. So, 17. <laughs> One over. All right, well, there you go. <laughs> it happens. It's starting well. What <laughs> can I say? Um, so, uh, the first thing that he's going to, uh, to do on his turn, uh, what's the gap between you guys? Uh, 40 feet. As a dwarf... That's too far for him to travel. So uh, the first thing he's going to do is uh, not close his character sheet, which I've done like three times now. Super frustrating. Um, uh, the first thing he's going to do is he's actually going to uh, stand there and cast a, uh, a spell on himself. Okay. That um, Where is it? There you go. Uh, he actually stands there and he casts uh, a, a spell very quickly. Um, he casts a spell on you. Do me a favor. Mm -hmm. Roll me an um, uh, Arcana check to know what it is. Not my forte. No. But I rolled 18, so I'll take it. Okay. Uh, you can see that he casts the spell known as uh, Hunter's Mark on you, throwing that in uh, chat for everybody to see. Oop, ignore that extra damage bit. I'll have to roll it with each uh, spell. So uh, he casts his bonus action. He can concentrate on you for a long period of time, dealing extra damage to you every time he hits you. Okay? Okay. Um, and then he stands there with a shield readied, waiting. Okay. Does, does not move forward. All right. Uh, on my turn, I will cast Spirit Guardians on myself. I'll mm -hmm. put that out, which is that. 
Uh, that cast that takes one action uh, to cast. It lasts up to 10 minutes concentration. So there's a 15 foot thing around me um, that they take damage if they're in and they're slowed if they're in it as well. Mm -hmm. um, I can still have a, I still have a bonus action, right? Uh, you do, yes. Okay, on my bonus action, I will cast Spiritual Weapon. Uh, I will cast that right now for you. So one bonus action. I create a floating spectral weapon within range that lasts for the duration or until the spells uh, the spell is cast again. Uh, when you cast the spell, you can make a melee attack against a creature within five feet. He's not within five feet, obviously. On a hit, the target takes damage. Uh, as a bonus action on your turn, you can move the weapon up to 20 feet and repeat the Okay, gotcha. Uh, is that it? Do I have move or no? Uh, give me one, one second. And one bonus action. Uh, the weapon would probably, what, what would it be, a spear? Yeah, I mean, it would make sense. Would, that, that's the weapon of my god. Yep, so give me one second. I'm going to throw one, uh, a representation onto the battlefield for you. Okay. Uh, really quickly. And bam. Oh, that, that is some terrible art right there. I don't, what is that? That is, that is, that is a spear that has really shrunk. Oh, because it's trying to fit into one square. Gotcha. Yeah, that was, that was a terrible representation. There we go. That's also really shrunk, but <laughs> that'll work. It makes more sense. So you're able to cast it up to 20 feet out, which is here. And then um, you can also move it 20 feet. Yes. On a bonus action, I can move it 20 feet. Okay. And so you cast it up to 20 feet out. So that's where it's standing as of right now. Do I have a move action or am I out? I have one action, one bonus action was what I used so far. You still have a move action. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So that would put him in range of my spirit guardians. Yep. I'm grabbing those for you as we speak. Um, so they're just like, like little, this. they're like, um, they're like little fiendish creatures that flit around me in 15 feet. To the front, uh, to the front. Um, and it is a 15 foot radius, Mathis? 15 foot radius. Which is a 30 foot diameter. Yes. So no let's go with, that's, um, where were we, 15? Around, it says around you to 20, a distance of 15 feet is what 30. it says. So. Yep. Um, so it'll stay around me, and I will exempt, because he, he seems like he's playing honorable here, so mm -hmm. I will exempt his three companions of the spell, so they will not be affected by it whatsoever. So if I was to center, oop, crap. If I was to center this on you, so you're right in the middle of it, uh, up to 15 feet out, right? Yeah. yeah. And so there you go. It's hitting the 15 feet. So, uh, so then for him, he needs to make a wisdom save. It must make a wisdom saving throw. Mm -hmm. Not a problem. I that for you right now. Okay. Super boring start. <laughs> it's just like spells. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're just getting spells and getting that shit out of the way. Super boring. Okay. Boring this out of the way. So this is the way it plays out. He stands there. He has his moments of sorrow. He looks at you and he's like, fine, let's fucking do this. Like, you're, you're an asshole. Let's just like... I'm offering you mercy, and you're like, fuck your mercy. Like, you think I'm just going to go down without a fight? And he's like, all right, well, you know, you pissed off the gods. This is what happens. You know your place, buddy. And so, um, First and of all, so magic works, which is a sign that Grimish hasn't turned me away yet, which is mm -hmm. good. <laughs> uh, was that a legitimate concern there, Mathis? Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> so, so you, um, oh, I should probably do that with him too. Sorry, let's bring him to the front. Oh, there's something I wanted. You to the front. There you go. Okay, so, um, so you, uh, so you guys have a stare down moment, and then finally looks at you. He says a quick prayer, which you instantly can tell that it's his, like placing a mark on you. Like mm -hmm. not only can he hurt you more if he wanted to, but beyond that, he can actually um, uh, find you should you try to run away. Thug maybe takes this as like a, a joking insult, and um, and it's like fucking run away immediately afterwards he casts a spell that sir uh, he casts a spell it says an incantation and he's worried thug is actually legitimately worried for a second did grumps turn his back on me because of what happened between me and obol i haven't really used magic since things i haven't needed to i'm not someone to frivolously waste magic if i don't need to and so he stands and he calls out to grumps like grumps like i'm here to serve you i've done things for you and this man wants to punish me for serving you and serving you well you know, give me assistance or however it is that Thonk would put that, right? And in response, immediately Thonk looks around and he sees the specters, the specter of many fallen orcs standing around him. Many fallen orcs off of who knows what battlefield, who knows when and who knows where that they came from, uh, standing to his sides. They don't look like clean, happy specters. They still carry on them the wounds that, that uh, ended their lives, the injuries that took them down. And giving them this like, really intimidating look uh the the specters 
are uh, white and stand in contrast to, like the dark colors of the stone around them, but have almost a darkness to them. Like they're white, but but they have like this darker tint to them, and and they certainly get uh, deeper and deeper in color as you get closer to their center. Okay. Anyways, that's what he says at first, and then Thongfield's emboldened by the fact that that may actually appear. Looks across the battlefield and summons to his side. He carries a spear that was given to him as a sign of his uh, dedication to, to Grumsh. He calls the, to Grumsh one more time to lend him guidance. And an exact copy of the fucking spear that he's holding, an exact copy of Blood Spear, is now floating in the air between him and his enemy and closing the gap between the two of them. Somehow Thonk walks past it because, you know, magic is funny like that, or because Mathis just doesn't know how to uh, use his action economy. So let's just... Um, should have moved first. You cast the spell second. Yeah, I got you. That's what it should have been. <laughs> so, so he walks forward like, oh, I feel emboldened. Walks up, get, closes the gap between the two of them, and then casts a spell, and the spear materializes immediately in front of him. When you cast a spell, you can make a melee attack against the creature within five feet of the weapon. Guess what? The spear materializes, and it's up to you. You can choose. Do you actually make the first attack this round with the spear? Well, if I don't, doesn't doesn't mean I, I doesn't a bonus action to attack. No, I'll let him do it. I'll let him make the first move. Sure. So you don't make the first attack with uh with the magical spear between the two of you. You want to allow him to go first. Yeah. He's got a, but he, he did walk. Uh, he is in spiritual uh, spirit guardians. So he still has to make a wisdom save. Oh, yep. Thank you very much. So I am going to make my wisdom saving throw, and my modifier is a that. I beat a nineteen. I'm assuming that's enough. So he'll take half damage. Ah, uh, yeah, that is very much enough. So he takes uh, seven seven necrotic. Because your DC divided by two. is only a 15. Yeah. So he takes seven points of necrotic damage. Thank you very much. Uh, let me make this a representation. Um, oops. And he still moves at half speed. That is always in effect. Mm -hmm. Of course. Um, and HP. Oop, I, I said hair. That's funny. Um, HP, sorry. Now he took seven damage. Thank you. Actually, did I already apply that? No, for some reason, 12 was already applied. So let me heal him a little bit. Um, perfect. Uh, and he moves at half speed. That's not a problem because you're only 10 feet between you and him. On his turn, he rushes forward and makes his first attack against you. He's going to hit. My armor is garbage. And by first attack, he is a paladin of high enough level. He makes two attacks against you. Okay, gotcha. <clears throat> uh, my to hit is a... Probably very high. Yeah. And my damage is plus. What's your AC? 14. Yeah. Your AC is uh, absolute shit. His first chance to hit swing against you, uh, he beats the AC of a 29. Okay. So he swings. And more or less, as he rushes past the spear that was doing nothing, he ignores the spear and totally takes the initiative. He's a vengeance paladin. He doesn't give a fuck about honor and shit like that. Beyond, like, I'll give you soul combat. Yeah. So he rushes That's forward funny. and swings his hammer hard and wide. And this thing connects with you with incredible force. As a matter of fact, I'm not even joking. I rolled double sixes, maximum damage. All right, how much do I take? 19 points of damage for the first attack he does against you. 19 points of bludgeoning damage, um, well, a combination, but bludgeoning damage for the first attack he does against you. It is a crushing blow. Strangely enough, not as much as you would expect from a hammer of this size. Still Clearly, that spell that he cast um, added a significant amount to what it is that he did. Clearly, it is a powerful hammer. It has a lot of magic. However, it is less than you would have expected, almost like... Like the hammer itself was avoided a more um, uh, critical spot on your body and uh, and missed you. All right. Um, I missed that spot. Almost like it moved last moment to hit something less critical. The second attack is also a swing and a hit. And it also rolled really well and does to you the total of 16 more points of damage. Oh, in that was one total. round. Oh, shit. Well, I'm going to drop then. Yeah. In one round, he does uh, to you the total 16. of. Okay. Well. 35 damage. Yep. I gotta I gotta drop him now or I I die is basically what it boils down to. Uh, so right. he comes rushing for us. 
and Thonk kind of like takes the reel back, but you know, Thonk is stubborn and kind of like, <laughs> and you know, like looks back to him with that like fury that is Thonk and looks to him like, like, oh no, this is not over. Oh shit, comes back with another attack way faster than you would have expected him to do. Clearly this person is at least as good at combat as, uh, as Grauman is and crashes into you again. Oh, Paladin v. Cleric is not a good place for a uh, cleric Thank to be. <laughs> yeah. No, no crap. Uh, all right, so on my turn, he still has to make a wisdom save. Absolutely, and I will do exactly that. Uh -huh. My wisdom saving throw is a 24. All right, so he'll take half. Funny thing is um, uh, one of the uh, the tiers that we do on the Patreon he takes is... seven again, so 14 he's taken so far. Thank you. I actually, uh, I actually record all of what we're seeing from my screen. So right. everything that is not displayed is actually displayed on the uh, uh, one of the tiers there. And the spiritual so, weapon gets an attack. Absolutely, and but you can only cast as a regular one. You don't have fourth level spells yet. So he right. takes. Uh, you said half of that is another seven points of damage. Thank so, you. Yeah, he's taking fourteen on that. So what am I rolling here for damage? Like, am I rolling like attacks, like an attack roll, like a normal spear that I have? I'm sorry for my spear, my spiritual weapon. What's the bonus to its attack? Uh, it's it would actually be my be, plus uh on a hit target takes four sequels one d8 plus your spell cast modifier however uh the attack modifier is based off of your wisdom not your strength x whatever and i just realized something really quickly Bear so with i'm rolling a 1d20 plus four for a chance to hit him mm -hmm. all right and we'll add four to this i've nat 20 on the useless attack yeah. amazing uh give me one second plus uh, don't mind me. Um, <laughs> I just so, uh, trying to fix something really quickly. Uh, it's a really bad roll for me. Um, all right, I don't. I can hit. I don't confirm a crit. Is there, there is confirming in this one, right? In five e, you confirmed a crit. No, you don't confirm to crit. You just oh, so auto just crit. Okay, you, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, you just auto crit when you roll ninety twenty. So you're telling me that you just fucking critical hit on the boss on, yeah. on the end boss. Hold on one second. What well, I actually did was, but not not for my inflict wounds, just for my spear, my magic uh, ghost spear. No, 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 I get that. Hold on one second. So what I, the number that you just saw me roll, actually, I accidentally have the character as too high of level from something else that I'd done before, and he wasn't appropriately leveled for the uh, for what it is that you're going through. So I was just removing health points from where he was standing right oh, okay, now. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, 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 to bring it to the level where he's supposed okay, to be. Okay, so he takes, he takes double, he doesn't doesn't get multiplied by two, I roll 2d8 since I crit, mm -hmm. and, he, and each one gets uh, plus my spell, uh, plus my spell attack bonus as damage. Um... Uh, you know, you just um, because it says I'm sorry, you could, yeah, I was, yeah, yeah, you get you get it once, so your modifier is what okay. four, so it's from 2d8 wisdom, plus four. Wisdom, wisdom is correct, four. 2d8 plus four. So sorry, I was half listening to you. Oh, I thought I hit enter, no, okay, so 2d8 plus four, so holy shit, more. 17 more points of damage. So when you come crashing at this guy with this, I'm going to describe this really quickly. So um, he comes running at you. He does that big, heavy uh, overhand blow, hits you, knocks you to the side. Like, ha, 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 I can take this. And you look back to him, like getting ready to fight him. But then he comes crossing back across the other way, clips you from the other side. And oh man, you can feel it in your bones. You can feel every part of you. You're starting to panic a little bit. Uh, all of a sudden, like you look around and call to the spirits to assist you. And they come lashing out and attacking him every which way. He seems to ignore them to the best of his ability, taking little nicks and scrapes here and there from them but not anywhere near as helpful as you were hoping but then that spear that you had summoned he moved past the thing he he had uh, moved past it ignoring it like it was nothing and turned around uh, it, it, uh, I'm sorry to attack you it turns around uh, flipping in the air and attacks him from behind catching him perfectly in uh, his lower back and hitting him in a really vital spot he lets out a howl of pain as a um, uh, a dwarven howl of pain like oh and uh as he takes that hit he is not doing very well at all um but he is still standing before you please thunk that was your bonus action and a non-action you still have your standard yeah so i'm gonna burn my inspiration and just third level inflict wounds on him please uh roll 91 please i don't know what i the thing is like i don't know what his armor class is because the only time i hit him it was a crit so that's kind of a problem mm -hmm, yep uh advantage all right 24 to hit. Mm. His AC is a 22. Boom. Nice. So I'm rolling 5d10 against him. Really fucking high AC. 
Come on, Thonk. 39 more damage. <laughs> so that's a total of... I think that would have brought Grommet down, to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> so 39, 49, 59... Six. No, Hang no. on. Yeah. So 39... 49. Oh, he's level he's level six as well. He was level 50, 10 when I did a mini quest before. I uh I had to change him back. 53, 53, 63, 60, uh, 63, 64, 65, 66, and then 67, 69. 70 damage flat so far, just on his face. Oh, I know. Okay. If you grab his face, describe it. It's the usual. Like it's I I'm this guy because you just got rushed. the shit kicked out of you, and then yeah. he ru ru rushed at you and two hits so beat the living shit out of you. It's it's the usual with Thong. Like, this guy rushes me, and I'm just gonna- I stand my ground. I look like I'm ready for battle, but I never look more fierce than, like, a, a barbarian or anything like that. And he lays a really heavy one on me, I crumple, like, and then he hits another one, I crumple again. But, you know, in Thong's mind, this is all still a, a test from Grimish. If if this is what it's meant to be, if I die this day, then I die this day. But I'm still going to make every attempt to prove that I'm worthy. So I, you know, wipe the blood off that's coming out of my mouth, and I stand up with a quick, swift grab. And again, the flash of red in my hand, I reach up and grab under his chin and just use every ounce of magic that I can and attempt to just drain him and collapse him. And as if he does fall, I use his body as a way to kind of push myself up from like the standing, the crumpled position that I, had, I was at and just drain his life. That's 39 damage. He's and there's no say. There's no saving throws against it in uh, in 5e like there was in the old days for like half damage and shit. You know what I mean? That's true. It used to be like you make attack roll in, then you get a save for half damage, but that doesn't exist in 5e, does it? No. I'm, I'm just going to double check. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's a little Flick concerned. <laughs> wounds. I'm just uh, double checking this right here. Mm -hmm. Yep, no. Wummy, me, wummy, me, bro. That's all I can, like, <laughs> if they gang up on me after this, the, I'm dead. Like, it doesn't matter. Describe I, it, Mathis. I just did. <laughs> so, like, the my ending. So, I, as he's collapsing and his bones are withering, like, beneath me, uh, and he's, like, the life from him drains as it typically does when I use a spell, uh, as he collapses to the ground and falls, uh, I just turn to them, and I just look at them, but while I'm looking at them, you see Thonk bend over and pick up the uh, Skull Crusher. He goes and bends over to pick up Skullcrusher um, while looking at them. But what he sees is the disbelief and fear and shock and anger overtaking the woman that's that, that's closest. That was like excitedly watching this battle and watching how they're like, ooh, 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 hey, huh, what, what? Ah, ah! <laughs> and she's like starting to freak out. And oh man, that look in her eyes. The look in her eyes, the sheer rage that, that is rolling over her. Oh, man. Oh, God, I just hurt my neck. Oh, God, I've had a neck injury for like eight weeks now. Fuck, this hurt. Sorry. So uh, she's like, she's like just the rage that rushes over her. Oh, God, that rage to the glory of Grumsh would make him proud. But it's not. And it's looking at you. you. You've seen that look so many times. You know what that is. And it's a little concerning. You reach down and you grab that hammer, knowing that you're very well going to have to defend yourself. Um, the elf, uh, seeing uh, how, how quickly things have just turned, takes several steps forward uh, to kind of like offer, like lend a, a hand or lend some sort of aid, trying to um, uh, go and like throw magics that way to offer some sort of healing, some sort of aid to the fallen paladin. However, the female dwarf with the long beard uh, walks up very quickly, walks up afterwards to reach out and grab his, uh, him by the wrist and to stop him from doing it. But with one hand while grabbing by the wrist to stop him from doing it, reaches out with the other one and does an upwards motion with her hands, curling her fist shut. And you can actually see the stone of the ground around you curls up and encompasses the entire head of... Sculpt Crusher 2.0 encompasses it in this stone and whatever uh, type of stone it, uh, it is that this entire, that this bridge was made out of. And while still the haft of Skull Crusher is there and you do grip it and try to pull it up, it is, it is stuck, seemingly a part of the bridge that you're standing on, embedded in the bridge that you're standing on. Um, 
I'm looking for a spell and I can't find it for whatever reason. Please tell me what you want. Uh, there's the stone, m meld the stone or whatever. If I already have my hand on it, does it count as my equipment? I mean, no. All right, then I'm not going to bother doing that. All right. I was going to say, just try and pull it out from the stone, but uh, I mean, it's stuck in the stone. What is, what am I, what am I going to fucking do about it? So you're standing there, you're looking at them. This, this female dwarf is looking like her spear in her hands is about to be in your chest. And um, uh, the elf is like looking like down and like, like he clearly needs to, wants to, must uh, help out, must cast a spell to save his friend, to save his companion. But for some reason, the, the woman to his side is holding his hand and he's looking at her shocked and looking back with concern and, and like there's so much confusion happening there. I will let go of it at this point, just stand and turn and face them, still hurt. Um, and, uh, and, and much like I said to him, I, I say to them, um, this battle was between he and I and not the three of you and me. He knew this going in and he knew the ramifications of going into combat. No man of faith goes into combat expecting themselves to live every time. This was um, his time. Uh, the uh, barbarian that's standing before you, clearly the barbarian that's standing before you, whatever you said fell on deaf ears. She didn't give a fuck. She charges. Full-fledged charges at you. Oh, Getting to you is a very difficult thing to do because of all the ghosts that are in her way trying to attack at her and slash at her and whatnot. Can I turn them on her? Because I, I dictated the spell did not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I obviously so, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so it makes it very difficult for, for uh, her to get to you. But she never does reach you. Okay. Another bit of stone comes up between the two of you and stopping her. And you hear like a really loud blood curdling scream of a much deeper tone than you would have expected from this woman's voice from everything you've seen so far. And, and then like this smashing against the stone that's between you. And then you can see her trying to like make her way around the stone and rush in anyways, but the stone like grows outwards and, and blocks her off and then continues to grow and loops around her, almost like encompassing her in a in some sort of shell or, or cage or whatever of stone, making it so she's not able to get to you. Um, <clears throat> from where you are, with another step or so, and kind of like looking to see exactly how things are playing out, you can see that once again, the hand of the female dwarf with the large beard is, uh, is held outstretched and was clearly the one that had summoned whatever this was that stops the uh, the barbarian from ske skewering you. Uh, at that, I'll wave my hand dismissively, but not at her. But with that wave of a hand, the I dismiss the spirit guardians around me and just wave them away. It was his fight. He asked for it this way. We would have done differently, but it was his fight and we will honor his choice. This is the woman. But know this, Thunk, you took our friend and now we'll take at least one of yours. Scurry on. Oh, fuck. That's not a threat. Thonk's gonna take lightly. And does he just fucking do the stupid and just challenge her? I have this awesome moment in my head, but I don't know how. <laughs> the problem is, like, I don't know how I'm gonna do it. Uh, uh, it's gonna get him killed. It's gonna get Thonk killed, but uh, Thonk is so fed up with shit just going south um where's the closest of the three of them oh, no. was well, the one that's uh locked inside so let me uh put it right here on the map there so um give me two seconds to give you all the pictography thingies that you want so um right here first thing we're going to show can you I drop is a heel on myself <laughs> You can always shop a heal. If I'm going to start a fight, I need yeah. to make sure I have at least one hit in me before I go. You have a potion too, down. I think. 
because each of I us might. has a potion. Oh yeah, we do. What is it? A one d eight healing potion? Mm, I can look. Okay, so first of all, right here is where the hammer is. Yeah, I can't get it. Okay. Two d four uh, then plus we have, two. Oh, two d four you. plus two. To front. Okay. Yeah. To front. To front. Gotta keep doing this. I can't do the other one to back. Otherwise, I'm afraid it's gonna go behind the actual map. I understand layers. It's just annoying the way things work. So she had run um, at you. Come at me, bro. Come at me. So uh, she had run at you. Um, let me get wall. I spelt wall with two W's because of um, a public um, education. I'm just going to grab a quick little, you work. There you go. Let me get really small. And uh, put you here, and then you can pretty much get the point from this. All right, go ahead. This is uh, where you see them is where you see them. You can actually move yourself slightly if you want to because um, of the... She's not walled in, though, is what you're oh, saying. She, she seems to be walled in from where you are. Okay. Like... Like her friends knew there was going to be no controlling her, and so she just handled the situation. I'm Aww, listening. They're trying to keep keep her. Um. Oh, it's it's so it's such a difficult choice of like, do I do this? because it's the thing Thonk would do, or do I not do this because I know it's going to get him fucking killed? You are welcome to maintain your initiative or roll for a new one. I assume you want to maintain it. If you're going to take an action, though, I have to roll to see whether or not they realize and are able to act before you do. It's well, the first action I was going to take is to cure myself. Heal. It doesn't matter if you go to do some... Well, if you go to do uh, anything... I suppose anything that seems aggressive. So if you're going to try to heal yourself before attacking, you're going to have to try to RP that one out there, buddy. Yeah, I know. If I... Oh, man. I just... I don't know, like... Oh, we all know that Sam wants you to do the dumb thing so Thunk can die. No, I, just, think, I think you should act like you're leaving, then heal, then be like... Then change your mind and cut and turn around. <laughs> I mean, no, that... But... but. Yeah, I just is a moment. There's like a w moment I have in my head that I want to happen. I know it. I don't think it can realistically happen. All okay. right, yeah. All right, I, I, I can, I can, I can alter it. I can alter it. That's fine. I have an idea. So then, I will. I'll nod and and in a way like act dismissive, like I'm fucking gone. And then I'm just not gonna deal with their bullshit. I am gonna, I'm gonna make it look like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I am gonna leave and try and just like you dismissed the spell, didn't you? I dismissed the big one. I didn't dismiss the fourth spear. I'll have okay. that follow me around just in case. Is it like a safety thing? Okay. So I move that out of the way. Um, and the spear is like still with you? Yeah, as a safety thing. Okay. So you, so you more or less, like she says, you killed our friend who will be killing at least one of yours. So we'll, we'll be killing, like more or less, you, yeah, you took our friend, we'll be taking one of yours at yeah. least. And then you're kind of like, huh. And you just turn and walk away. Mm -hmm. Okay. I need to get to a point where I can just heal safely. Well, yeah, you're kind of at a point where you're able to heal safely. All right, I'm going to drop um, the potion that I have on me. Just drink that, which is 2d4 plus 2. Potions are in action, so it's not like you can drink a potion and heal in the same round, if that's kind of what you were thinking. No, I'm just going okay. to take my time. I'm assuming they're going to take their time to say their goodbyes or whatever they're going to do and drag this body off. Mm -hmm. So I don't expect them to run off, and I don't have time. So roll 2d4. <laughs> yeah, I heal for 4. Um, and then after that, the plan is to cure up just with cure wounds on myself or actually preserve life. Yeah, I'll just use preserve life on myself. Um, so it heals five times my level. So 30 hit points will bring me basically up to max. All right, that'll be that'll be two rounds basically. I spend. Doing so, that. so you walk away. You go to the edge of the bridge. Um, are you trying to look like? Oh, I'm just trying. To, I like, mean, like I pop the potion as I walk and like make it look like I'm drinking, like as I'm leaving, and then I'll take a minute and breathe after I leave the bridge and be like, kind of center myself and drop a heel. Roll your deception. Sure. 
please, but because like your back is to them, you're a distance away and you're not mm. technically doing anything aggressive, I will be kind enough to give you uh, advantage and you're welcome. Oh, thank you. A whopping eight. <laughs> okay. Um, when you do that, you hear the elf say uh, something in Dwarven. Do you, do you speak Dwarven? I do not. I'm pretty sure. Nope, I do not. Okay. So I something think in I'm Dwarven. I'm the only one who speaks Dwarven, actually. So something in Dwarven, and then uh, the Dwarven woman with the beard responds, and then says something else, and then she kind of like looks up and looks in your direction. And she's looking at you and just like the stone look on her face. Well, actually, it looks exactly like the way it did before. It hasn't changed at all. Yeah. However, um, you think maybe uh, she's saying more or less like, go ahead. I dare you. <laughs> go ahead. Don't. Please. Uh... But really, it looks exactly like it did on the bridge. I think that's just Thonk seeing things. Yeah, yeah. Uh, all right. I turn her at that. Like, yeah, he sees her. Thonk turns around, almost like he's actually changing his mind. And uh, he starts walking back towards them, and he just says out loud, then you're going to have to take two. Um, she is very happy to see that you're willing to come back. Because of the fact that you walked away and everything, I am going to make you reroll initiative. Yeah. Instead of, uh, because you didn't like stay there in the moment, you actually went and broke moment for a bit and then came back. So you are going to have to reroll initiative. I'm going to have to. Us? Oh, okay, click. Whopping six. So I'm going to be taking a beating again. Um, I need set this one up. What's her name? Durand. D for Durand. Bam. And then we go. Where are you? I'm so annoyed. There you are. I feel like I've never, it almost feels like, oh no, you haven't used a bunch of uh, minis at once before. And the comment, yeah, okay. Stars Without Number was like the most confusing game ever for like all the mini control. And not Stars Without Number, sorry, what's the other one we did? Don't know. Star Wars. Oh, he rolled the two. Oh, we're going, oh yeah, we're going against all three. That was, I don't know why I thought otherwise. I mean, come on. Come on, Mathis. What's the matter with you, buddy? Uh, and here we go. And the last one. Okay. All right. They're all two only, twos. Only one gets to go before me, so that's a win. That's pretty funny. So, uh, all that being said, like, every, everything that's happening, uh, you see the elf is the first one to act. Uh, the elf is the first one to act, and, uh, he casts, uh, a spell. You can roll me your arcana check, uh, to see what it is, because of, like, the moment or whatever that you're in. The kind of magics that he's using. A four. You have no idea. Yeah, I didn't think so. <laughs> okay. And um, uh, so he does cast some sort of spell uh, out there. Um, uh, let's see. Yes. Okay, cool. And now it's uh, your turn, Thunk. Uh, um, I got I to get myself some armor, I think. Uh, if we're going 3v1, and these are like PCs, this is going to be a problem. Um, where is uh, Shield of Faith? That's what I'm looking for right there. Bonus action to cast. Yeah. Uh, no concentration or anything. Uh, plus two to your AC, last one minute. Yeah, it says duration 10 minutes. 10 minutes. So I'm casting Shield of Faith. That's my first, the first level spell. Uh, shield uh, was one minute per level, 3.5. Yeah, yeah. So that'll bring me up to a 16 AC, which is not great, but it's better. Um, and then... It's got to be something else. Can I reach them with Sacred Flame? I believe so. It's what, 60 feet, right? 60 feet, yeah. She's what, 55 feet from you? And uh, the other one is 45 feet from you, the elf? Which one's the barbarian? Uh, inside the Wall of Stone still. Okay, so, okay, gotcha. I guess I'll just hit the dwarf with a Sacred Flame then. Sure, you make your attack roll against her. Um, Sacred Flame is... I don't have it on my attack thing, so let's just click it. Oh, it's a dexterity it's a saving save. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> All right, oh. there you go. Okay. 
So they got to roll I deck save. I that spell. I used it so much oh. on good Hey, day. they rolled well. I go. rolled in the open by accident, but okay. Well, um, so you cast that spell. So what is it? You you cast your flames just to kind of like erupt uh, over there using your own holy fire to do so. And uh, oh, seeing it happen. Uh, seeing it happen. Um, looking over, I didn't mean to roll in the open like that, but seeing it happen over with the, uh, like just, uh, seeing, sorry, looking over and seeing you there, seeing you prepare yourself and then cast that spell. She quickly dodges to the side. She takes like a half step over and then, uh, holds her hands out and in front of her hands, uh, it seems to appear a whole bunch of stone, like a stone slate that protects her against the burst of the flame itself. But then almost immediately afterwards, that stone slab falls to the ground and shatters into a whole bunch of gravel, which seems to fall back into the bridge itself. All right, cool. That's my turn. Okay. Actually, you I'll move. Up. I can move. Yep. I'm moving. I need to get closer. 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 30. There. And then the spear doesn't come with me, I don't think. I think I Because you already spent your bonus action to yeah, cast yeah. a spell. Yep. Yeah. So you, um, uh, you hear a whole bunch of cussing and swearing, because you know a couple of dwarven words. Uh, happening in uh, inside the wall of stone. Uh, that's right there, and that is that. And then all of a sudden, the the dwarf that just like you cast a spell and was able to protect herself against it. Um, she starts to like walk towards you, reaching uh, to grab a hammer from her side. Starts to walk towards you, but then like the cussing and swearing. Uh, she seems to ignore it until there's like loud smacks of metal on stone, and she kind of like stops. And like seems so exactly the same as she has the entire time. Mm -hmm. um, as she turns and turns her attention to the uh, the wall that's next to her, and then holds her hand out and brings it together, and you see part of the wall crumbles into uh, into gravel and almost remelts with the ground around it, and the wall opens up for the the barbarian on the other side, who's gonna ah, ah, <laughs> and then gets ready to uh, go charging at you. Oh my uh, gosh. Why Sadly, you, that why is. Why you get closer to them? Because all my attacks are melee. <laughs> you don't have any ranged attacks. I, you just saw it. Sacred flame. <laughs> oh my gosh, uh, dude! Welcome uh, to that, being a cleric. That is you her know? turn. She does nothing else with it. Go ahead, Mathis. Mathis has crazy uh, AC though, so it should be fun. I don't know. I yeah. I, I yeah, had 16. a cleric and I did a ton of like range stuff. So I'm not... wait, you only have sixteen? You didn't shoot a faith? What the fuck? That I gave did. Him a 16. That was. That gave me a sixteen. <laughs> oh my god! Rest in peace, my dude. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, well, no, he's uh, the poor guy. So um, uh, after all that's done, the, uh, what's his he, name? The cleric. They threatened you guys, man. Come on, man. Um, the, the cleric looks over. Um, uh, so the cleric looks at you and casts a spell. Is it Arcana um, again? It's annoying. They used to pop it up as a spell card. Give me one second. Uh, it's actually pretty apparent what it is, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay. Um, so many little hiccups. I'm so annoyed. I... I never make this many hiccups. Where the hell is the get rid of spell card next? There we go. Spell card. Bam. All right. Guiding bolt. So uh, a flash of light streaks towards the character within range. Make a ranged attack roll against the creature. And I'm going to do that right now. 4d6. Holy crap. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be make a ranged attack roll against you. It's going to be... Uh, chance to hit and damage is 46. Uh, chance to hit is a 22. So this uh, crack of light streaks across the sky and hits you for the total of 13 points of radiance damage, which I don't think you have any um, uh, no. and to protect you against that. No. The next attack roll made against you um, is going to have advantage on that yeah, attack roll. Okay. Yep. Right. So he uh, cast that spell on you. Um, to make that shit happen. Which one was it? This the, who? Which one? It was the uh, the cl the the uh, elven guy, and he starts making his way around the stone, um, over and stands somewhat behind the woman with the long beard, the dwarven woman with the long beard. Uh, it is now Thonk's turn. All right. Um, does that count as an action? Yeah, action. Yeah. It's tough to decide what to do here. Um. Do I burn my last third level slot on Spirit Guardians again? I mean, to guarantee damage if I get in range of them all and just start doing AoE. Yeah, fuck it. We'll cast Spirit Guardians again. So I'll just put myself uh, on centered on myself as always. That means you lose any other concentration spells like, say, Shield of Faith. Oh, shit. That's right. Shield of Faith's a concentration spell. It is. 
So isn't it? You might be right. Um, it does say I do have concentration, concentration. checked off. So it yep. is. Fuck, that might be a terrible idea, actually. Mm -hmm. Oh. All right, fuck it. Let's just go and try and one shot somebody. Um, that's all I'm really good at, anyway. All right, dwarf, you're my target. Let's go. <laughs> just bad touch everybody. That's all I can yeah. do, you know. <laughs> what do you want me to do? I can't really do much else. Did I get my inspiration back for killing the other dwarf? Uh no, you, that's that's an inspiring moment. Inspiring moments are when you are uh, for me and for Grumsh. Actually, you know what's funny? Actually, come to think of it. Oh shit! You asked if whether you get your inspiration back. Your flaw. Once I pick a goal, I become obsessed with it. Uh, yeah, yeah, with the yeah. detriment of the detriment of myself everything and else in my life. Yeah. Uh, but one of the things that you've defined before is that the safety of your friends, or at the very least, Otto, is extremely important to you. That's and, the only reason I turned around. <laughs> yeah. Um. Actually, the fact that you turned around to defend your friends against these fuckers. Ah, fuck! <laughs> I'll sorry, take so, it. sorry, viewers. Yes, you have inspiration back. Fuck. <laughs> oh, 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 oh! Yes, and that was fucked up my next turn. You uh, fucked up my next turn, oh, and that yes. wasn't. And that no, no, you fucked up my next turn. And that wasn't even that wasn't even the second roll of the of the advantage roll. Sam, are you seeing this shit? Yeah. <laughs> I don't Sam, have to roll another D20, Sam, right? Sam, he fucked I, up my next turn. Look at my fucking, look what I posted in the chat. I said, Thunk is going to kill two of them, then die and create a problem for us later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. I'm literally a C. <laughs> oh my do I, I don't have God. to, do I roll another D20 to try and like confirm insta death or do I just keep rolling? Mike, Mike, that doesn't yeah. exist in 5e. All right. You, you just don't roll. Confirm crits. You just, you just roll Five, your damage, D10. bruh. Ten. Yeah. Roll your five hundred damage. I even know that, dude. Damage Just roll your damage, you dumb, dumb. How many? Dumb. How many three level spells do you have? Hold on. That's my wait a second. three, three, because I'm six. Three, because I'm level six, bitch. <laughs> and you only cast. Wait, did you cast your spirit guardians a second time, or is that a second no. level spell? Fuck. You didn't cast it a second time, did you? No. Because you did this instead. Yes. I decided to just go one shot him instead. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Well, roll your damage. You're leaving us all in 50. I knew it. I even I even said 50 damage. I predicted it. <laughs> oh my god. How much HP did he have? I don't know. Oh my god. Uh, once again, it was a couple levels too high. Give me one second. I have to... Oh god. Oh my fucking god. So everybody has to wait on the edge of their seat for a moment while I try to unfuck myself. Oh. Um, this is Ollie's uh, character, right? No, uh, Ollie's was Ollie's oh, character Ollie's was the this, barbarian. Yeah, the this barbarian. is actually Rinson, my sister-in-law's character. Oh, okay. Yeah. This is I understand. Then. Wait, you have to D-level at four levels to see if it dies. So th three levels for this one. Yeah. So I have to <laughs> roll three d six plus because it's a stone sorcerer, not just uh, Constitution, which is oh my god, it's so much health I'm losing. Three d six plus fifteen is what I'm removing off of the health points. Oh my god. Oh. God, no! It had 74 health points at max. I rolled 25. It has 49 health. <laughs> Mike, you fucking miserable cunt! Please, could you describe it for me? It, uh, it's literally as I said, like he turns around, he starts walking slowly, then he starts picking up his step, and he just says as he's going after him, when she said he's gonna have to take one of my friends, then I said, you're gonna have to make it two. And then I just went in to take out another one, was the goal. And, and you and go just, in and again, describe it for me. It's, 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 it's signature at this point. Fucking face, neck. I grab them and I just drain them of everything that they are. And the life of them saps and the body crumples. And I just stand there. <laughs> okay. Um, actually, because that was what? Move and action? Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay, that's it. I'm your out. bonus is your spear, which you're going to move forward 20 feet. Right? I can't click on it. You have to move it. I got it. There you go. Okay. <clears throat> well, we'll see what happens now. Okay, where's my yeah, that's my initiative? Please don't hit me. Please don't hit oh, me. Oh, oh, Rodan is going to hit you. Well, then I'm gonna drop probably. Oh. She like so Rodan was just excited and get ready to run, come running at you. She's <laughs> and then she sees that happen, and like all of everything, every bit of whatever she had. Oh, just okay, I just turn to her and be like, run. But it, she's raging probably, but no, but you know. It just stopped. And she's just like looking with like 
confusion, like genuine confusion of what just happens. And then it comes back threefold, the rage that she had. The, di the distance between you and her with that wall open up is only three steps. I'm going to say it's like, what, a square? And she takes them slowly and with purpose. It just kind of like step, 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 and then thrusts with all of her might, every bit of might that she has. She thrusts with the spear in her hands. Please, Natty <sighs> one. I will find out the answer of that for you in a moment. Natty okay. one, please. That's all I can do. That's three, and so that'd be three is six. Okay. Ah. Oh. Fuck you, Mathis. Well, you're still, it's still 3v1. Like, I walked into a losing fight here. I'm not going to get out alive. Your AC is what right now? Just a 16. My first attack roll beat a 15, and it missed. My second yeah. attack roll was a fucking eight and it messed. Yes! <laughs> Grumpsh! Hello, friend. I, fuck! I told you to fuck off and you still came back for me, buddy. I appreciate it. <laughs> the cleric's reaction when you, the, the elf's reaction when you did that was he had a plan. He was moving over towards around the, the woman in front of him. Hold up, chat's yelling guiding bolt. Is that still on me with the guy dead? It is! <laughs> I get a second attack! I'm not that's the take... person that cast it. Mm -hmm. I, gonna, I don't have chat. I don't have chat open because I didn't want to be distracted. When, dead? when the no, guy, no, no, no. the guy, that's cast not who dead. cast it. Oh, it wasn't. The the elf is the one that cast it. Okay, gotcha. The other uh, one's one that opened okay. up the wall instead of attacking. Okay. Oh, please, I'm gonna take that away. That's rules, man. Please, I knew walking I into this, I, I could just die. Like, if they're dead, I don't think so. Yes, what is it? Yes, you take 16 points of damage from the uh, the spear from the first attack. Second attack would have missed anyways because it's only the first attack after Guided Bolt is cast that does the uh, advantage on the attack roll. Gotcha. So it comes forward, thrusts into 16 points of damage to you. Still up, but not by much. Crushing 16 points of damage. So you see that the elf was uh, making his way around the, the bearded dwarven woman uh, and had a purpose. What that purpose was, you weren't sure at the moment. Until you grab her and all, drain all the life from her and then looking over, like after she drops down, you kind of like look up over her crumbling body and you see him. You see that inside of his hands, um, he was pulling something from his pouch. You're not sh uh, uh, you, you, oh, sorry. Hey, uh, hey, 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 hey. Totally clicked that by accident. Oh, whoa. But you see a, a fistful of diamonds. Uh, inside of his uh, inside of his hands as he was making his way over, but then when he watches that happen and the look of shock and horror on his face, <laughs> yeah, he looks down. It. He's like, he's like, mother, 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 oh, mother, <laughs> and, and and he throws himself down to the ground. And with that fistful of diamonds, whatever he was going to do with it before doesn't matter. He throws himself down to the ground and quickly throws them over his, uh, over uh, apparently his mother's body and immediately starts chanting and saying some sort of spell and laying his hands on, on the, the crumbled woman that's in, in front of you. Attack of opportunity, Strange? I mean, you don't get provoking attack of opportunity for casting a spell and certainly not within range. Uh, uh, if it I, thought you got, I thought you got an attack of opportunity if they cast a for, spell in melee. For me me casting a, um, an attack for certain things like uh, ranged attacks and stuff like that, not for... No, that's 3.5, Mike. Okay, Old school. sure. Old school. That's fine. You know who does that? Maggie, because she has a feet. Gotcha. There you go. So um, anybody who uses magic around Maggie can do that. Raman can do that because of her feet that she got from the amulet ends. So uh, anyway, so he casts a spell, throws down, and casts a spell onto, uh, onto the woman that's on the ground. And all of a sudden, you see that despite what you had done to her, despite the, 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 the life being sucked from her, all of a sudden, she's like, the diamonds kind of like meld into her. And you see her go like, <sighs> oh, that's and it like looks around trying to like take a moment and you see like um he's kind of like looking over her and like teardrops are falling and he's like oh mother are you okay are you are you well are you okay and she's looking and seeing that you're still standing over and she's like dane fool you should have killed him first and like like starts rolling over to to push herself back up off of the ground oh. And now it's Thunk's turn. Yeah, Hold, oh. please. Hold, please. Hold, please. It might be Thunk's turn, but that doesn't mean that the other guy can't, you know, cast his own spells. 
So of course he casts a spell, the guy that's on the ground. And so when she says that looking at Thon concerned, ah, you motherfucker with your spell card, your lack of spell card bullshit. He casts another spell and he happens to also cast spiritual weapon. Yeah, which by the way, that attack roll would have been one less. So it would have been a 17. So that's actually accurate. So the attack roll would have been one less. It would have been a 17. And to roll the damage for, uh, all of a sudden he casts a spiritual weapon. What appears before you is actually a, a long, slender, no, 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 correction, is actually a war hammer appears before you, a large war hammer that almost looks like it should have been used for a forge. But here it is clearly being used in battle, floating in the air. And that also takes a swing at Thonk and hits him, hits him successfully for uh, <laughs> one less, sorry, 11 points it's of damage. Fine. It would bring me under, but I'm a half work, so I stay at one for next till next turn. Fuck. Okay, so it doesn't it matter. I'm up gonna die and hits you to to uh one. So it's like poof, and you should drop. But there's the sheer fury, that fury that's always bottled up by Thog, the stuff that he always bottles up and pushes down inside. He he holds it to himself. He holds his fury, and now we come around to Thonk's turn. And it was a pleasure playing with you guys this week. We're actually going to cut it here, <laughs> really? and we're going to um and oh we're going God. to allow the hashtag Kill Thonk to last for one more week. Oh my God. Don't don't bother. As we, as we come back don't around, bother. as we come back around to uh, the no, end of this no, fight next it, week, fucking let it end. Oh, yeah, no. let it end. I'm let kind it of end. Oh no, let no, it no, end. no, no, I, no. I'm I'm loving this. It's Thonk's turn. I'm loving this. Yeah, and I know exactly Holy what I'm gonna shit. do. Like, let's just go. How, let's end I, it. No. How are you still <laughs> fucking alive? Because I'm built <laughs> to go one v one, and if I hit, you're gonna lose a lot of life, and if I crit, you're likely dead. Well, I, I say I say we let it. I say we let it just sit there though? and, and oh, because it's fun. But he, oh, it's, it's fun. I'm just I I'm gonna be alive for five minutes in the next session, and then we're just gonna be like, wow, that was a sweet cliffhanger. I'm genuinely just pulling over his chain. I, I imagine I just pissed off a lot of people. Okay, so <laughs> Mathis, it's your turn. Yeah, if I'm going out, like, and I, I'm gonna cause as much pain as I possibly can going out. Seeing how he reacted to the mother dying, I'm just gonna take the mother again. So what spell or what do you have? What can I we have, possibly I have do right wounds. now? <laughs> I can just do it as a second level spell instead of a third. Oh, so you're just gonna like legit take advantage on your attack because you're reaching down onto yeah, the person on the ground, her, and... man. Just so like you... Ender. If I because this like Thonk realizes at this point like he's facing his death. He knew turning around going in threatened his friends. He knew turning around going into this was going to end him likely. So in 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 true you know style of staying true to Grimish he's going to cause as much pain and chaos as he can even on his way out. So he's sure. just going to go down and take out the mother and know that he's going to die with uh, with that person sobbing. Okay. So uh, I just didn't know if you had any other spells or any other options that you can do instead of that. I mean, to keep myself alive, not not that's going to keep me any more alive than I am. Like, if the, the biggest healing spell I could drop... I say healing. So I mean, to, like, to like hit people? Yeah, to hurt them. Like, I don't have anything that can do like an AOE attack that would guarantee any anything. Sorry, I'm hiccuping a lot over here. Um, He's just nervous. No, I know it's going to happen. I'm, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Yeah, uh, I just have to. I, the only other thing that can happen is natty ones and misses on their next go. All right, let's see what happens. Uh, you said because they're laying down, I get an advantage Watch. on the attack roll. He fucking crits. Well, <sighs> she does. I don't need to crit. She's not at full life. Revivify doesn't bring him to full. No, it brings him to one fucking health point, yeah, which I is why she her. looked at him and said, you didn't kill him first. Okay. Um, I Again, like, so my apologies. My question was to see if you had any of the spells you wanted to do. But So you want to do, I imagine, not the second level version, the first no, level version? No, I'm just going to do the, the first level version of Inflict Wounds. Absolutely. God, there's, there's a chance I live through this. Uh, all right, I'm swinging. Advantage, oh, right? Good, yep, pressure. And then, 19. Uh, she's on course. the ground. Yep, of course. Um, so, I mean, she's going to die. I'll roll oh, my damage. Shit. She takes oh. 25 more damage. Like she's dead. Just stop oh clicking, Mike. Oh my god. I'm, I'm it's my character outside. sheet. You're moving. I know, around. I know, but you don't need that side yet. I'm looking okay, at that. Gotcha. All right, you um you uh describe it for us a second time and gag a final like, time. choking on my my own blood at this point. I don't even say anything. Uh, no, I do. As I as I reach down with both my hands, I just cough out. Should have listened to her <laughs> and just kill her. Oh, that's fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so you just take the the, the just, rest of the life away from her. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, um, and live you the that? rest of your life in sadness and despair, you asshole. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Dan's turn. Yeah, let's roll. There's people, no people more. People are saying that if you win this battle, that I'm not gonna. I'm not going to be fans of Thong. <laughs> <laughs> I can't live through this. Holy oh. shit! I still can't believe you're alive. Wait, my 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 blood spear, my my spear on my turn. I get to it gets to do something. Unless you had a different bonus action spell you wanted to cast. I'm trying to think what else I could cast as a bonus action. You spell don't have do you don't anything. have healing word. You already have um I just have uh, shield prayer of faith healing, already on you. Which uh, is uh prayer of healing's instantaneous. No, it's duration instantaneous, a 10 minute cast. Yeah, yeah, um, that's a big one. I don't know why you always have that memorized. It makes no sense. I don't it might be auto memory. No, that's not true. It's uh lesser restoration. Yeah, I don't think I don't think that's is it a bonus? What does it do? Is it? Uh, I gotta look it up. I, well, if you're talking about um, common, common emotions, emotions no, it's an action, it, it, so you can't do it. I was yeah. just looking at something. I was seeing if it ends barbarian rage. That's all. But, it, um, I think it does. But yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, that doesn't matter. No, it's prayer of it's healing. Something that can save your ass in this moment. Um. All right. Well, I'm just, and uh, I was just glancing around at other things in general. Just so, uh, so move my my little four spear to the barbarian, and like I guess I'm gonna swing at the barbarian because that's the closest in range. It can move only hit. twenty feet. One, but two, it can attack three. anything within five in range. Can you leave? Um, can you disengage or move back? Oh, I can actually get exactly there because we allow diagonal movement, Ollie. Um, so you uh, make your um, way. Over, so it makes its way over there. You make your attack roll, please. And thank Which you. is what again? Uh, just a D20 uh, plus your four. proficiency bonus plus your wisdom modifier. So what's that? Seven. Yeah. I'm not gonna hit it. That's fine. Yeah. No. Two plus All seven. Right, let's is go. A hard miss. Swing and end it. Okay. They need to miss miraculously. Well, th this person's chance to hit is actually not that great, which is kind of funny, um, comparatively. So I took out I took out the heavier hitters except for the barbarian. Oh, I just totally pressed a button that closed everything. That was annoying. Do you even know that was a thing that could happen? But it did. Okay. So, um, oh god, um, I went out taking out a mother. That's uh, fucked up. That's classic thonk. Yeah, no, that's exactly it. It's classic thonk. Look, at this is all being recorded, so he's not lying. <laughs> or if I am, you'll be able to call me out for it if you uh, if you get the opportunity to see the recording. So, um, <laughs> I missed with both attack rolls. Sweet, I'm still what? alive. <laughs> I missed with both fucking attack it's rolls. because Otto has that fucking Timora hacks. He's like lending it to you through the internet. I appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. I got you. Okay, that's only one of the characters, right? That's correct. We still uh, got another. They just need to get one hit and I drop, so it's okay. The first thing Dane is going to do is Maybe use... they're so emotionally broken after seeing his mother die twice. They can't do anything on this turn. They are stunned. Definitely. Or try and revive her again, which is awesome. Probably. Kind of... <laughs> really? He's got more diamonds? Okay. The magical hammer thing that got I summons, the spiritual weapon, gold. missed you. Okay. <laughs> Fuck. Still alive? Is a diamond right. 200 gold? It's 300 gold pieces. It needs 300 piece Damn. gold pieces of diamonds. We should get some cast. diamonds. Mm -hmm. Um, But no, that. it's not like he can cast that left and right if he wants to. <laughs> uh, please do me a favor, uh, Mathis. Could yeah. you please uh, roll me a wisdom saving throw? Wisdom saving throw. Yes, please and thank you as I do 11. one of these. Bam and bam. Oh, well, I'm not moving. Oh, for one round at least, you're going to be completely paralyzed. So Dane, first thing he does is he casts the soul. So he commands that uh, the spear come over and thrust, and it swings at Thonk, and it misses. Again, three spear attacks made against you from the barbarian and from this magic. And all, all three of them miss you. Then he casts a spell, uh, and he just goes like, I call upon you, Morden. Stop this heathen! Stop him now! And so, um, and so, all of a sudden, you feel, you feel like you hear the sound of clanging metal on metal, much like you're inside of like a um, a blacksmith shop, right? It's sound of metal on metal, and with that piercing sound, it runs this like shaking uh, uh, tone through your bones, and it stops you completely short. 
and you're frozen perfectly still. And so as you're frozen still, he's like, looks around, like in shock, like the fact that it actually worked. And he starts like, almost like a zombie, like shuffling forward. And then immediately goes over to you and starts like searching on your body and starts like reaching into your pockets and feeling all over you. <laughs> it's a rude dude. It starts like feeling all over you. Uh, I'm going to make an investigation he's check, but with- He's feeling but, him up. He's looking for diamonds that I don't have. Um, <laughs> He's gonna make yeah, a check with any, disadvantage to uh, try to find it. I don't think does. Maybe, maybe Rai does in that chest because she has a bunch of gems in there. I don't yeah. know if there's diamonds in there. Well, um, he knows that Thonk is a cleric, and he knows that Thonk is a powerful cleric, so he kind of oh, assumes that Thonk would have these make diamonds. Sense, but Thonk but, is not that type of cleric. Thonk, no, no, he is. Thonk actually uh, specifically asked me uh, to purchase those before, and I oh. told him straight out, like, "Hey." You have to find somebody that has that. Uh, and he was like, oh shit. And he hasn't found it yet. Yeah. The NPC okay. doesn't know that. So he searches over Thonk's body and tries to find uh, diamonds, is unsuccessful in doing so. However, that's his entire turn. Um, I can't move. <laughs> it's going to be free hits. Good night, uh, good night, sweet prince. I go out <laughs> like a chump. Wait, what level's Ray's dad? You should raise his mother as a. So. Uh, I'm out of third level spells. I thought about it. I thought about it, but That'd I don't. Great. I, I'm out of third level spells. So that loops over to uh, the Thonk's turn Can't and the move. target. So the target must make a wisdom saving throw, be paralyzed. At the end of each of its turns, they can make another wis uh, wisdom saving throw. So you get to make a saving throw at the end of your turn, which decides whether or not somebody attacking you gets bonuses. All right. Mm, give another one. Here we go. <laughs> I'm done. Good night. Okay. okay. Um, I, got, I went out with held person. Lame. So uh, sadly, it's what happens when you fight uh, uh, powerful baddies, right? I don't so, know. What um, I guess when you are wisdom saves a plus seven, I'm rolling so low. So when you're paralyzed, you can't move or speak. Yeah. Uh, you automatically feel strength and dex saving throws. Attack rolls against you have advantage. Any any attack that hits a creature is a critical if the attacker is in five feet of the creature. He doesn't even need so. To hit Do I get to on my turn still cast move my spiritual weapon though? You do as a bonus action. Oh heck yeah, bud! Watch out, barbarian! Here comes the the the, the, the <laughs> one, funk. one through one d twenty, baby. Plus seven. That's 20. actually a hit. That's a good yeah. hit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. One d eight plus one. Oh, yeah. oh <laughs> six, six damage. damage divided by two because he's raging. That's um, fine. You know. So uh, okay, <laughs> here's my attack rolls against you, Thonk. Goodbye, sweet world. If you survive this. I'm not gonna. There's no way. There's no way, dude. Hold person is gonna end me. How much health do you have on you? One. <laughs> I go down in one hit. The oh, first shit. attack by the spear is a wide out uh, slash across the chest, yeah. doing whatever amount of damage to you and injuring you. And as you still held there paralyzed by the spell, uh, with your chest bleeding out and things kind of getting dark, and she's just kind of like, no, pay for, <laughs> and she raises the spear up over her head with both of her hands, and she just starts like chanting some sort of religious chants that you've never heard before to a dwarven god that you probably never even heard of either. And then with all of her might, she thrusts the spear through Thonk's chest and embeds it so far in that her her fists themselves are against your chest and hit it with so much force, you go flopping down into the ground, the spearhead itself being embedded into the, uh, the, the stone bridge, Thonk being uh, held uh, suspended in the air by the the pressure of the the spear inside of his chest and it's just being held there so he's just kind of like arms open wide suspended in the air blood dripping down the spear and dripping onto the ground uh as as things start to to fade and and turn dark for thunk goodbye oh it's uh unfortunately thunk's uh destruction us, though right what uh, oh oh yes no you're right maggie he gets uh, get death saving throws, so there's a potential you could still live. Wait, what? I'm still, hold on. Uh, hold on. Okay. Unless he executes you. Hold yeah. on. Yeah, as I say, they just ripped my head off. The first attack did six points of damage, which brought Thonk to negative. The second yeah. attack was an immediate two death points. Yeah. Thonk, those are the attacks I'm making against you. You have a very slim chance to succeed here. Please roll me your first death save. Or is it just a straight d20 and I need to not roll a 10? You click the button that says death save on your character sheet. Okay, gotcha. That is it. 
You yep. already had two death points from the attack roll. Oh, that is man. it right there. Really Thonk, Thonk destroyed a artifact to a, a dwarven god to, to do with Thoin and invoked, invoked the vengeance of a vengeance paladin to that god to uh, come and hunt him down. Thunk defended himself well against that god, th that paladin, and reached down to take his artifact, which should be his. But unfortunately, a, a stone sorcerer um, dwarf was able to seal it into the ground, so that Thunk couldn't grab it. Thunk then took his vengeance against that stone sorcerer and killed her as well in front of her son, so she could watch it. Unfortunately, he did not survive the attack, but that doesn't change the fact that the dwarves will never be able to get this, this weapon back. The person who embedded it into the ground is now dead. The person that hunted him down for its creation is now dead. Instead, sitting here on this bridge, much like Excalibur in the stone, is, is the new Skullcrusher, a unholy weapon of powerful orcish magic, um, sitting there waiting to be claimed by some would-be orc warlord that should come across and find it on a bridge right outside of the podunk shit town of, of Rivermoat. And here, sadly, ends the tale of Thunk. Um, Rip Thunk. Uh, is it still appropriate to say hashtag fuck Thunk? <laughs> well, there's oh, going to be man. a section of people that are happy and a section that are people that are pissed, and that's how it should be. <laughs> So thanks for watching, everybody. Week 32 in the books. Um, week 33, we are here for next week? No, are we? Uh, next week here? For this one, we are. <clears throat> It'll be the oh, day the after PAX, so I'm not sure. Yeah. I can do that, but I'll be doing that from a hotel. Wait, wait. You're saying next week we might not we might not be playing? Yeah, it might not be happening. Well, wait a second, because I'm like I said, I'm in Maine next week. So if I don't have to rush home in the morning, if I get to spend like extra time by a lake in in nowhere, Maine, I will totally do. I did not think if that we that take was an if we take next week off, we're actually taking two. two I would prefer I would prefer to play if it's an option, option, but we'll but discuss this over the course of the next day or two and figure it out. Yeah. Sam yeah. needs to go do things. Bear needs to go sleep, and all of us have responsibilities. So, Bear, who are you? Where are you from? Hi. <laughs> Where are you from? My name is Alex Larrabee. I was born in Utah. Uh, <laughs> hi. I, hi, I'm, Alex. I'm Bear Who's Taffy. Who's your daddy and what does he do? <laughs> <laughs> Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, B-A-E-R Taffy. I'm playing West of Loving on YouTube. Going to check out the new Mario Rabbids game on Twitch soon. And uh, we got uh, pack stuff coming up. So that's what my life is now. Yay. And, and in like two weeks, episode 100. Yeah, the Roundtable yeah. Podcast. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Good. Triple digits? Yeah, mm -hmm. dog. Fuck yeah. That's amazing. Kudos Pretty to you. Cool. Yeah. Sam? Sam, you're up. Aside from not going right, to TwitchCon. I'm Sam. Uh, I'm not going to... I am going to TwitchCon. I'm not going to PAX. Oh, that's all right. Uh, yeah. Uh, this week, I'm going to be playing some Absolver, some Street Fire, and mostly XCOM 2. Uh, just started playing that yesterday. Um, I'm a massive scrub, but we're having a good time. Head over to twitch.tv forward slash stripping to check me out uh, and at stripping on Twitter. Thank you. Uh, Maggie, uh, the messiah of Lost Initiative, since Comcast is the, the, the true demon of the <laughs> show. Hopefully that gets resolved. I don't know. I, I hope you have another service. Fucking that's Comcast. Um, you can find me at Margaret Crone in all the places, Twitch, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, etc. Um, I am on all kinds of things, so I think think we'll be here thursday so if you want to check out lost initiative on thursday i'll be here at 6 p.m uh we do our vampire the requiem show and i really enjoy playing emmy so i hope i get to play that some more um and then also i'm over at roll for it on sundays in the morning at around 10 a.m pdt and i get to play a vampire slayer on that one it's a buffy the vampire slayer rpg and then uh, I do some other stuff on my channel. But this weekend I'll be at PAX, so if you're at PAX, definitely come say hi. I'm going to be crazy busy, but um, let me know, and I'll let you guys know whenever I'm available to say hi. Awesome. Sweet. Hello, everybody. Also, I can't wait to see how we find out where Thunk dies. Oh, like, yeah. when our group finds out that he's dead. Like He's never going to show up is the thing. <laughs> and you're going to yeah. use, like, the message thing and just... Thunk? Here. 
<laughs> so so um uh hello everybody delrick twitch.tv slash delrick master tomorrow morning actually less than eight hours from now i'll be going live with my mass effect taking place in 2164 uh stream that i do it's a tabletop rpg loads of fun shortly after that i go live on my friend ollie's channel kind of funny uh the character that killed thonk was actually designed created and rp by ollie so that makes uh that, that's uh oh that's as, uh, he's going to be happy about that one. Um, other than that, my um, uh, Eberron game that I usually play every Friday night at 9.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time over on uh, my channel is actually coming back from hiatus, and we're starting Chapter 2 uh, this upcoming Friday. Other than that, you know, other stuff. You can find me on Twitter and, and places and things. So, Good uh, stuff. Thanks. thanks for watching, guys. If you want to contact the show directly, you can go to the subreddit and talk about the episode. If you want to tweet at us, it's at Lost the Knit Show. Obviously, we have a brand new Patreon. If you guys want to support and go above and beyond, uh, you can go ahead and do that. There's a link in the description below. Uh, auto automatically, just thank you to Josh, Tiff, Alessia, Fred, Rath, and Jace for being the first patrons. We appreciate it greatly. Uh, and next time we play this show, it may be a couple weeks, and we'll see what ends up happening. Thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you later. Bye. Bye.